you very much, Daddy K. Good morning once more, everybody. We are always glad to come into the house of the Lord. Every day is a wonderful day that the Lord makes for us. And today is one of such wonderful and marvelous days. So we have come into his presence with happiness. We have come with singing. We've come with joy. We've come with thanksgiving to celebrate our Father and our God. Today's message will be the beginning of a seven-part series on Thy Kingdom Come. So beloved, we we'll look into that in a little bit, but I just want to invite each and every one of us to have our communion elements. If you don't have one, please take a quick second to grab maybe bread, maybe cracker, grab water or juice so that we can participate in the discerning of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no need to gather together and not point everyone to the very reason why we are gathered. So we are here because of our Lord Jesus Christ and we want everyone to know. So beloved, letting everyone know is by discerning the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no greater gift that man has received than the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. And how do we go about making the full use of this gift? Is by submitting ourselves and becoming partners with our Lord Jesus. So beloved, if you have your communion elements with you, I will take out the bread, and I'll read to us from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15, which says, he died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. Christ died for you. Christ died for me. Christ died for everyone. Whether you have received Christ or not, he died for you. And the option is still there for you to receive him and benefit from all that he died so that we should have. And for us to enjoy life in this world, the best way to do is to live for the one who has died for us. So beloved, as you raise up your, 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 your bread, I just want us to pray together. We say, Father, we thank you for your son whom you sent to die for us. Because he has died for us, oh God, we know that we no longer live for ourselves, but we live for Christ. Grant in us this day the selfless spirit of Christ so that we too, oh God, shall be his true representatives here on this earth. We just bless you, Father, as we break his body and partake of it. We are partaking, Lord, this day unto selfless service, just like our Lord Jesus Christ served and demonstrated here on earth. We do this in remembrance of him. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake. The word of God tells us that when supper was ended, Christ took the cup and gave thanks, the cup of blessing it is. So as you pick up your cup, we're discerning the blood by reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. You say, for God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Oh, Father, we thank you for your son who came and shed his blood for us. By the shedding of his blood, we were redeemed unto you. By the shedding of his blood, we have become his ambassadors. By the shedding of his blood, you, our father, are in us. 
inviting the world to come back to you. So we pray, oh God, that we shall not hesitate to reach out to the world and say to them, come back to God. Because we know that as we do this, it is you who will be in us who will reconcile them back to you. We say, thank you, Father, who we'll continue to partake of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in remembrance of him until he comes again. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake. Praise God, everybody. Like I said earlier, we are talking on thy kingdom come. It's a post-pandemic seven-point plan that we'll be looking at. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, we see that the Lord is teaching us. When Christ was teaching his disciples on how to pray, he told them the heartbeat of God. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We'll be using Matthew chapter 6, verse 10 throughout this series. Thy kingdom come, that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In earth, as stated here in the King James Version, refers to you, the person. Let God's will be done in you as it is done in heaven. When God's will is done in you, then you will begin to affect your environment. You will begin to export what is in you to your environment and God's will will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. What we want to know is that your purpose is very important. Your purpose is key to you doing the will of God. So today we'll be looking at you recovering your purpose. You want to talk on you recovering your purpose. So this will be, like I said, a seven points um, plan. So we'll look at recovering your purpose, how relevant it is to causing thy kingdom to come. Then the next time I have the opportunity to share the word, I'll talk about reconnecting with the word. Then the third will be to detoxify the children and to connect with your spiritual authority. And five, you walk in power. Six, release of the power to make wealth. And seven, to encourage the servants of God. About a year ago, Pastor Pauline introduced this plan and talked about recovering your purpose. So it is time for us to go into the full plan so that everyone is aware of what we are looking at. Today, we'll be focusing on recover your purpose. Recover your purpose, amen. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. All of us have heard that because the template on how to pray has that verse. Verse 10 of Matthew 6, say thy kingdom come that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So for us to recover our purpose today, we are looking at what God is saying. He says thy kingdom come. Christ is teaching us there that this is the will of God, that his kingdom come, his will be done in earth as it is in heaven. But we understand that God has given man the ability to operate on earth. God has given man the ability to operate in the physical realm. It's only man who has the ability to operate in the physical realm as well as in the spiritual realm. So man is the competent person to partner with God to bring about his will here on earth. So today we'll try to see how you position yourself, why you should position yourself, because you have to position yourself in order to 
become a partner with God. There is a time, there is a place. So you want to be in the right place at the right time. And I believe that we are in the right place today. Amen. We'll also try to see that the God who made you to do his will did so in terms of packaging you with a purpose. He gave you what to do. Your purpose is why he made you. Your purpose was the reason why God designs you the way you are. And all of this is so that you partner with him well. God equipped you for your assignment. He packaged in you everything that you will need, both the hardware and the software, so that you'll be able to accomplish purpose. And that is your potential. What is it that you carry in you that will be able to take you to fulfill purpose from one level to the next? That also we'll be looking at today. Also, the last thing that we'll look at is that God has given you enough guidance to fulfill purpose. He has given you enough instructions, enough of his word for you to fulfill purpose. So we will be looking at these things and seeing how we have to, how they all work together, where you are, how you align with where you are with your purpose and what you carry in you to bring about that purpose and what you need to do so that what you carry in you can bring about the purpose. These are the things that we'll be looking at today, amen. Now, we will look at you positioning yourself just to answer the question, why should I position myself? And I want us to just quickly look at Psalms 1, 15 verse 16. It says, the heavens are the heavens of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of mankind. The heaven is his. He has not said, come to heaven and fulfill purpose there. No, he has given us the earth. And because we are here on this earth, we want to find out why did God create us so that we'll be able to do the reason for which we were created. Psalms 24 verse 1 reminds us that the earth is the Lord's. He created the earth, but it is his and its fullness. Everything in the earth is the Lord's. The world and those who dwell therein. So you look at the houses, you look at the cars, you look at the trees, you look at the mountains, the, the rivers, the oceans, the valleys, all of that, the deserts, they are all the Lord's. You look at the cattle on a thousand hills, all of that is the Lord's. You look at every human being that you see is the Lord's. You look at every animal, it's the Lord's. The Lord has all of these things. So the question you ask yourself is, if this is the one who owns all of this, should I position myself to partner with such a being? And he is inviting you to partner with him. The Lord is inviting you to partner with him because he has given man the authority to function here in the earthly realm. The spirits cannot, because they don't have a physical body. So man has a physical body. And because of that, God wants to partner with you. He could create some other beings to do it, but he has chosen mankind. He has chosen the sons of mankind. He has given us the earth. In 2 Corinthians 5.20, we, as we read earlier, it says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. 
we have to be zealous as ambassadors. And what will ambassadors do? We will look at the heavenly realm it, we, that we saw in Psalms 115 verse 16. We will look at the heavenly realm because that is where we come from. An ambassador comes from a country to go to another one. So an ambassador is representing a foreign country. So we are strangers here. Our country is the kingdom of God, which is in heaven. Amen. So as ambassadors, we should know how that heaven is. So that as that verse B of uh, Psalms 115 verse 16, say, but the earth he has given to the sons of mankind, we should be able to understand how heaven is so that we will implement what heaven desires to the earth. So that when our father comes, our king comes, he'll be comfortable here on earth. That is the calling that we have as ambassadors for Christ. So you want to position yourself to say, yes, I accept this, this offer as an ambassador. I accept it. And as you accept it, you want to start aligning yourself so that you understand how the heavenly realm functions. So that when the Lord says his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, you will do exactly what you have seen him do in heaven. And as such, his kingdom will come here on earth. We do actually desire to experience his kingdom on earth because we know that in his kingdom, there is no death, there is no sorrow, there is no darkness. His light is sufficient for us. There is no weeping, there's no gnashing of teeth, there is singing, there is praise, there is worship, there is happiness, there is peace, there is joy, there is righteousness. That is what makes life worth living. So we desire that. So as ambassadors of Christ, we need, that is what we need to be reflecting here on earth so that we will propagate the kingdom of the Father. God made you to do his will. Most of us are familiar with cell phones, if not all of us have cell phones. But what we might not have paid attention to is the evolution of cell phones. The first cell phones were extremely heavy. You know, extremely heavy. Some were over five pounds because we we're like 2.2 kilograms. Heavy, heavy, heavy things that you carry in your hands. And even the features, they look so, I mean, for now, we would say they look so awkward. But at that time, they were the, the, the thing thing. They were the thing that you had to carry to show that you were actually, you know, you are actually a cool person. You were in vogue. But what we notice is that although the designs have been uh, upgraded and modified to fulfill our present needs, one thing remains common, that the basis, the basic technology has not changed. And also, the improvements that are being done are done such that every part is in sync with one another. When the phone maker makes a phone, he's not asking the buyer, what will this phone fulfill? No, the phone maker has identified a need. And because he has identified that need, he goes ahead to make a phone that will solve that problem. That is the purpose of a cell phone. And when you receive your cell phone, a brand new cell phone, as you remove it from the package, if you try to turn it on for the most part, it may not be on because it has to be charged. You have to plug it in. That is one of the principles that it goes by. It functions on electricity. You plug it in so that it can receive a charge. When it receives the charge, then the phone is open 
to the different functionalities, you can now get into the potential that was built in this phone and start applying the principles. If you want to make a phone call, you dial the number. If you want to make a video call, you have to activate the video icon. If you want to take a picture, you activate the camera. If you want to send a text message, there is an icon for that. All of this hardware and software are in your phone so that the promise of the maker of the phone can be fulfilled when you respect the principles behind the operation of the phone. The maker of the phone sends you a manual and that manual is his word. Say, this is my word. And when you receive that manual, you have the ability to obey the instructions all by yourself. You don't need to have the maker there with you pointing to you every time the next thing you need to do. Whatever you need to do, the manual is there for you to refer. So you on your own, you go to the manual. You go to the manual for whatever functionality you, you want to. You go to the manual because you've looked at the manual and seen the promises. Oh, I can do multiple calls at a time. How do I go about it? You go back to the manual. Remember, the manual is the word of the maker. We attach so much respect and priority, so much attention to the manuals of electronic devices more than we attach to the manual of our maker. If you are not functioning well, all these other things can pass away. You can be in bed and sleep. While you are sleeping, your phone can wait. But even while you are sleeping, there is a manual that is making sure that you have good rest. We need to pay attention to that manual. The word of God makes us understand that our purpose is to do the will of God. And Matthew 6, 33, which says that we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to us. That is like our charger. Because it doesn't say seek. It says seek first. This is the first thing that you, you need to do. Activate yourself. Plug in. When you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the kingdom of God is within you. That's what the word of God tells us. And the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is not just empty talk, but it is power, demonstration of power, the Holy Spirit. Seek first the kingdom of God. Plug in yourself, you charge. Then the power will activate. And these things that we chase in, the house, the cars, the food, the clothing, and all of those things, they will be added because we have plugged in. We have gone to seek first the kingdom. That is the first thing that we need to do. And when you do that, when you seek first the kingdom of God, you are acknowledging that God is your maker. You are acknowledging him. And as you acknowledge him, you activate the warranty that he placed on you when he made you. When you follow the word of the maker of your cell phone and something goes wrong because you have followed the principles, the manufacturer's warranty will absolve you of any losses, any malfunctioning of, of the device that you have. But when you don't follow his instru the instructions of the manufacturer and something goes wrong, it is you to take responsibility for that. Amen. 
you are exempted from the warranty when you don't follow the instructions of the manufacturer. So too it is with our maker. If you acknowledge that God is your maker, then you want to plug in. You want to seek first this kingdom. When you don't, the more you stay away from, from the presence of God, the more you run away from him, you become rusty. You lose your charge. You lose your charge. But we want to stay connected. There is a lesson that we can learn from the cell phone and apply it to our lives. Being connected is very, very important such that if you go to the airport, there are, you know, there are small stations where you can charge your cell phone. They don't want you to lose that. On the buses, there are ports where you can charge your phone. On the planes, there are ports where you can charge your phone. On trains, there are ports where you can charge your phone. If you go to lounges where you're waiting, there are ports where you can charge your phone. Because when your phone is out of charge, you cannot use it for anything. And most people will connect to try to reach you through your phone. So too, we should always remain plugged in. We must remain plugged in. Because as we remain plugged in, then we have the full faith and responsibility of, the, of our maker backing us wherever we go. The purpose of our lives originates from God. God created us. He says he has the earth and everything that is in the earth belongs to him. So how would I have partners there? So he makes you and deposits in you something that will help fulfill the purpose for which you know, his kingdom will be propagated. In Psalms 139 verse 16, the word of God says, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. God created you. God made a purpose for you and laid it there. But he will not control you. He is giving you the option to choose him or not to choose him. And every time that you choose to stay plugged in, you understand more what the next level is. As you remain plugged in, you understand more and you continue to dive in more and more and more. And your purpose becomes very clear to you that indeed this is what I am supposed to do. This is where I should be. Seeking God first opens you up so that you would understand even more what the Lord has in store for you. He has given us the software. He has given us the hardware. He has given us the principles to operate the software and the hardware. And he has given all of this to us so that we will be able to walk on this earth that belongs to him in a manner that will be pleasing to him and it will satisfy us. We need to stay plugged in and connected Amen. so that we can understand our purpose. God did not just send us and leave us by ourselves. If we look at the cell phone that we are talking about, the, the, the different parts of the phone have evolved to resolve different concerns. The first set of phones that came out, the small screen that was there was for you to see, make sure that the number that you put in is the right one. And when a, number, a call comes in, you can see the phone number. Then it moved to a time when it started even having name recognition. I remember also even when they were advertising phones 
by saying, can you hear me now? Then later, can you see me now? These are all evolutions. But what happens is the screen that you have on your phones today has been built such that when you activate to be seen, you can be seen. It has been built such that if you want to watch a video, you can watch it. it. Has been built so that if you want to record a video, you can do that. So this hardware is there, the screen. And there is software that is upgraded on your phone ever so often so that it, when it's activated, it can bring about the promise of the manufacturer. So too is or are the potentials that God has built in us. God has given us a brain. He's given us legs. He's given us hands, nose to breathe, ears to hear, eyes to see, mouth to speak, legs to walk. In Psalms 139 verses 13 and 14, we see how the word of God says, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. God created you and deposited in you the hardware that you need the hardware that you need to function efficiently. He dropped all of that in you. He dropped all of that in me. We cannot say we don't have the potential. We do. And for part of the software, in 2 Timothy 1, 7, 1 verse 7, King James Version, say, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of law, and of a sound mind. The spirit is not tangible, but the legs are tangible. The eyes are tangible, the ears are tangible. The tangible ones are the hardware. The intangible are the software. And these constitute your potential. You cannot say you don't have it. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. That's an example of the potential that God has given us. A sound mind to understand what is happening, where you need to be, to determine, to analyze situations and make determinations on how you can move forward. He's given the power to overcome any situation if that's in front of you. It's giving you the grace of love, love that surpasses all understanding. God is love. He is giving you himself. He's part of his nature. It's in you. God is omnipotent. He has given you part of his nature, all power to activate you and keep you activated for as long as you need to implement what your sound mind has resolved as what needs to be done at that time. The software is there and the hardware to support it. God has given us the potential in Genesis chapter one, verse 27 and 28. It says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the earth, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God has given us the software, making us to look in his own image. Yesterday I was talking about the monitoring uh, company, ADT. If you have that sign on your yard, in itself, it is a deterrent to people who want to trespass and maybe break in or steal. 
because they look at that and say, you know, there could be every reason that this monitoring company will press in on me. They may arrest me even while I'm here. They may have pictures of me and post them on billboards all around the place. Just that image, just that, uh, uh, that sign on your yard deters people who have adverse motives to come to your place. So too is the image of God upon us. There is no devil who will walk towards you when they see this image of God. They fear, they tremble, they run away because you are in God's image. There are so many times when people will disguise as others. And when they come to the scene, they will be welcomed as the one they have disguised to be. That is God's image. There is no, nothing that will not bow in the presence of God. So God has given us that image. That is a potential that we have. We should not shortchange it. God has given us the software to activate because he has given the hardware to be fruitful and multiply. He has given us the ability to fill the earth and subdue it. He says you have dominion over the fish. So there is so much technology, so much understanding of what to do to dominate the sea, that massive, massive body of water. Man has been able to dominate the sea. You have dominion over the birds of the air from the biggest to the smallest bird. Man has it in, in a zoo somewhere. Every living thing, if man will put lions in a zoo, man will put elephants in a zoo, man will put giraffes, kangaroos, you name it. That is the potential that we have. That is the potential that we have. With all of this potential, the Lord is asking us to plug in. Say, seek me first and activate this potential. When you seek me first and you activate this potential, then this is what I promise you. Isaiah 30 verse 21. He said, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right and when ye turn to the left, this is the way, walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right and when ye turn to the left. He doesn't want to leave us to make any mistakes. But when we plug into him, the, 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 the hardware we have, the ears, has software that because we have gone to the presence of the Lord first will be activated so that we can hear the voice of God. So that we can hear the voice of God. Just like Brother Allen was testifying about the message on hearing the voice of God, which Pastor Jones taught. I just encourage us to go to YouTube, just type in the Outgivers Ministries and look for the message on hearing the voice of God. You hear, God will say, go this way, not this way. Why? Because he is directing you. You have the potential to know exactly which way to go. Go this way. Because when you go this way, you will overcome the plans of the enemy. Then you walk in it. And you are fulfilling purpose. Every time in life, we are faced with two decisions that we could make, which is the basis of, of, uh, of the computer. I think the computer language is fractioned as 101010. So every time you hear the word of the Lord speaking in your ears saying, go this way, you hit it, it's a one, it takes you up. When you don't have that, you are not functioning under that unction and you hit the zero, it takes you down. There are so many zeros that you will take and 
if say this was a video game, you will be out, you will lose. But every time you hit a one, you advance to the next level. You hit a one, you advance to the next level. How do we navigate life? This is the GPS that God has given us. He has given us the ear. He has put the software in it, which we can only activate in his presence. And that way, it will be telling us, turn right, go straight, make a U-turn. God has given us this potential and the world knows it and they draw from it to make things that we can see. And like children of God, we need to wise up and say, where did this knowledge come from? Then we'll begin to understand that all of this comes from the Father. He has given us potential to do all that he's asked us to do. Potentials in themselves will not fulfill purpose, but there are principles. There are principles. You cannot buy a new cell phone and just start running around with it, expecting that it will function. It will not function well. Manchester City's dominance of the first half coincided with the little change. Please, could you mute your phone? If you are not speaking, could you mute your phone, please? Let me see. Then somebody mutes me. After that, he got his men up to 20 yards. He started getting players running in behind. Shane was screaming during the first half, saying you need players running in behind to stretch. Mr. Einonsen, please mute yourself. Okay. Thank God for that. Please, if you're not speaking, we encourage you to mute your phone. Okay, that's still disturbing. Oh, man. So we're talking about principles. And please, whoever has control should try to mute that phone for us. Thank you. The cell phone that you have, if you don't plug it to charge, after so many hours, you lose the power. It doesn't matter if you scream at the phone, it will not turn on. It will not, you will not be able to use it. And for as long as there is no power in the, on that phone, there is no benefits that it will, will give you. You cannot make calls, you cannot receive calls. They say you are offline. You cannot be reached because there is no power. So too it is with you as a person. This is how your maker has fashioned you. He says, connect, that is a principle. Connect and you get your charge. If you do not connect, you don't get the charge. In Deuteronomy chapter six, verses four to nine, we'll see these principles. It says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your heart. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. These things that we have read here, these are the principles. These are the words of your maker. Just like you will adhere to the words of the manufacturer of your cell phone. 
so too are you to adhere to the words of your maker. It calls for obedience. Obedience to the principles. Obedience to what the word of the Lord says. Love the Lord your God with all your hearts, with all your soul and all your strength. That tells God that you are totally sold out. And by being totally sold out, you're no longer yourself, but it is God living in you who will take you to overcome any obstacle that is in your way. The Lord tells us to impress the knowledge of him on our children. We should talk to them about it when we sit at home, when we are walking along the road, when we lie down, when we get up, at every time we should stay plugged in. That is the principle. Tie it as symbols in your hands. You want to identify with it. When you are traveling, you will find ports. At, like we said before, the airport has spots where many people will just gather around to plug in so that their cell phones will not run out of juice. So you tie it around your hands, on your foreheads. You write it on the door frames of your houses, on your gates. Everywhere should be a source of charge for you. That's the principle. You need this so that you will activate every good thing that the Lord has deposited in you. In Joshua 1, verses 8 and 9, it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. There is no greater promise that the Lord will be with you wherever you go. The Lord will be with you wherever you go. That is one of the greatest software that you have. And how will you get this activated? The principle is let the word of the Lord not depart from your mouth. Meditate on the word of God. Meditate on it. Purpose in your mind that you will do what is written in it. And what's the promise? That you will prosper. You will have good success. And the Lord who has said this has promised you that he will be with you wherever you go. Amen. Now, we also see some of the principles. The Bible is full of the principles. And like we said earlier, the principles is the word of the maker. This is the instruction. And you will survive. You will do very well all by yourself by just reading the instructions and implementing what the instructions say. In James chapter one, verses five to eight, it says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous father. The principle is you ask our generous father and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you from asking. That's a promise. Ask him and he will give you. But when you ask, be sure that your faith is in God alone. He has given you a sound mind to connect your faith to. And when you do that, you know that, yes, my faith is in God alone. You know that you will receive the wisdom that you have asked for. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. 
and they are unstable in everything they do. Amen. Amen. Unstable in everything that they do. Do not waver. When you waver, you are expressing doubt. You are questioning whether the one who has promised can deliver. You are questioning whether he has the ability to deliver. You are questioning whether he has the will to fulfill his promise. So do not waver. Just go to the Lord as he has said you should come to him. Go to him and ask and you will receive because that is the promise that he has given us. These are the principles. These are the principles that we need to adhere to and we will see results when we do. So beloved, we need to focus on recovering our purpose. And to do that, we have to be intentional about positioning ourselves to the will of God. Everything on earth belongs to him. So you want to stand in line in a way that he will see you. The times when Oprah used to give uh, say gifts, there was a time I think she gave vehicles to all who attended his show. Those people positioned themselves, they were there. And because they were there, they received the vehicles. So God is reminding us today that he, that the earth belongs to him. The fullness of the earth belongs to him. The people who dwell on the earth, they belong to him. So he wants you to position yourself so that he will notice you. Position yourself so he will notice you and give you an assignment. And for us, fulfilling purpose means living for Christ because Christ has died for us. And through him, we have all partaken of the one cup, which is the Holy Spirit. It is partaking of that one cup that makes us co-heirs with Christ. And as co-heirs with Christ, we have access to everything that belongs to God. As we are succeeding, as the Lord has promised us that he wishes above all things that we prosper and be in good health. This is a promise. We will prosper even as our soul prospers. This is a promise. The Lord is capable of fulfilling that promise. So if we follow the principles that he has given us, we are rest assured that he will fulfill the, the promise. Amen. We have to pursue righteousness. We have to pursue peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is how we stay connected to the Father. He who has equipped us, he's given us both the hardware and the software to function and fulfill purpose. And the only way that we will do this well is that we should adhere to what is in his holy word because that is the manual he's given us. That's the instruction. So beloved, I just want to thank you guys for your attention this morning and pray that we have been blessed by this message. And we say we give all the honor and glory to God. Thank you and God bless you. Amen. 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 To God Amen. Be the glory. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you, Daddy K, for this powerful message. Um, indeed, I was blessed and I trust we were all blessed by this message. So um, we will just open the floor for any more comments, feedbacks, addition, subtraction, whatever you have in mind in regards to this message. Um, my particular year was really blessed again, and I just want to thank you and for allowing yourself to be used by God. And when you talk about recovering your purpose, what comes in my mind first or what came in my mind was 
why am I even, do I even know what my purpose is before I'm even trying to recover it? Because there's a difference between recover and discover. So I'm like, okay, I have to discover my purpose. And how do I discover my purpose? Just like you said, our purpose is to do the will of God. Now, what do you think the will of God is for your life? What do, you, what do I think the will of God is for my life? Those are the questions I'm asking myself. Because yes, it says our purpose is to do the will of God. What's the will of God for my life? What does God has planned for me? What, what's God's plan for me? You know, those things are things that come in my mind. And then once I'm able to establish what God's plan is for me and fulfilling this purpose, which I know that it's living in Christ. And then once I'm living in Christ, then I start seeing what God's plan is. His assignments, what he wants me to do and all those things. Anything that would amount to advancing his kingdom. You know, those are the things that I think of or that I know. And then at some point, some of us now somehow um, disconnect. Like you said, you unplug your phone from the charge. Like you disconnect yourself. You are on the right track. You're going, you're going towards discovering your purpose because we get to discover our purpose every day. It's not like I already know what my purpose is. Maybe where I am right now, being in, at the well, coordinating, maybe it's just the beginning of my purpose. I don't know what my purpose is. It's just the beginning. God preparing you, God preparing me for something that he has in mind or he has for me ahead. So as I go through this journey of discovering my purpose, um, at some point, sometimes we, I'll call it backslide, unplug my phone from the charge. Now, I wanna come back to Christ. I have to ask for forgiveness, go through all that, and then, you know, start recovering my purpose from where I left off, right? It's like you lost your phone or everything in it is gone, your data in it is gone, you go back to T-Mobile or whatever, so, hey, I lost my phone, right? They have to recover that data for you. So they will come say, okay, you lost your phone. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's not the end of the war. We can always, you know, do something for you. Now, give us whatever information about your phone. Then we take it from there. We try to recover that data. We recover that lost data. So that's how I look at it, right? There's always room. Even if you feel like, you know, you started well, that's it for me, you backslided. This is just a message to say there is still room for you to come back and pick up from where you left. So thank you so much for this message. It's really a blessing. God bless you all. Amen. Amen, amen. 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 Um, I'd like to make a comment. That um, Dr. Kwame was an awesome, awesome teaching. And it's a... The analogy that you use for the phone, where am I? The analogy that you use for the phone was an excellent one as well. So the um, what you were saying about writing on the tablet of our uh, the, the doorposts and so forth, which is awesome as far as writing the word. And then Proverbs 7 and 3 tells us that we ought to write uh, on the tablet of our heart. So that is why the word is so important for us to know so that we will not only know, we will have that word, not just knowing it or can recite it, but it's in our heart. And whatever we speak, once it's in our heart, that's what's going to come out because the Bible tells us also out of the heart, the mouth speak. Amen. So that was really, really a good uh, analogy that you used this morning. And even with evolving with the phone, when it used to be big and bulky, and and I had one of them too, and um, and and then you know God started out with the law and how they would kill animals year after year, and He realized that look, that's not going to work because the that blood and that killing only lasts one year. So He evolved, and then here we go 
Jesus came and he died for us, right? And allow the spirit of God to come on on the inside. Glory to God. So now we don't have to worry about doing all those rituals and things because everything that we need is right here. No matter how much evolving the world does, we have everything that we have need of already on the inside. Glory to God. So we thank God for, I, I just really appreciate the word this morning. It was awesome. And I miss you guys, by the way. And I'm just happy to be back. Amen. 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 Thank you for sharing, Pastor Amen. Jones. We're happy you're back and we've missed you too. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then I'm going to go next. Welcome, Pastor Jones. So, um, Pastor you. Jones, I'm so happy to have heard you preach the way you did. So just when you were going on and on with the analogy thing, I already got the message. Like, my spirit was already jubilating because it already clicked. Like, everything just came together even before you put the flesh in the bone. So, I am so blessed and I say thank you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Sister Bella. I can tell you really got the message because from your comments in the chat, you were like, preach on, preach on, fire on. <laughs> Amen. I'll go next. Amen. Pastor, thank you so much for this word. It's such a word in season and we can everyone can relate with this word. It was very simple yet very, very touching. Amen. So, you know, when I think about everything you said, I mean, I I could speak on every point you made, but I just want to highlight a few. You know, when I think about um, the will of God at every given time, I think about the will, wills as in, as how the world knows it. You know, for example, somebody is about to die. They said, I'm going to write my will. Some people while alive, they write their will so that when they are gone, you know, people can default to that will and know exactly what they need to do. So Jesus Christ lived his life. And then when he died, he left his will. And the will is his word. Jesus Christ is the word. So if we can find um, a way to get the word into us, then we are aligning ourselves with the will of God. Because it is about the will of God, not our will. Amen. When Amen. we understand God's will for us, then we discover our will, our purpose. Amen. So it's Amen. all about him. And I'm so grateful um, that we are being reminded about this today. Then, of course, you also talked about um, recovering purpose and maybe rediscovering purpose. I'm glad you said that because we cannot redefine our purpose because it is not us, it's God's. We can mm -hmm. only discover it, amen? And if we lose it somewhere along the line, we can recover it. So God's purpose for our lives cannot be um, redefined. Because, and the reason I say so is based on the scripture you shared on in Psalms 139 verse 16. It mm -hmm. says that your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book, they all were written. The days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. Now, what does this mean? It means that before we were dispatched here on earth, mm -hmm. our journey had already been documented. So God looked amongst the people, his children in heaven and said, you know what? This human being will fit this purpose. So I'm dispatching you on earth to go and fulfill what is already established in heaven. Amen. 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 Well, here, we are not trying to redefine what God had established in heaven. We are simply aligning ourselves to what had already been established in heaven. Amen. So we have no business trying to do things our way because his eyes saw our unformed being and his, he knew what was best for us. So he sent us to come and fulfill it in, on his behalf. Amen. So when Amen. we constantly realign ourselves with the word of God, then we real as, um, align ourselves with his will and his purpose um, for us. Amen. Yeah, man. You talked about the phone. The phone analogy was just wonderful, very perfect. And here I wrote that the phone is useless to the user without charge. Amen. Amen. So to become useless to our father when we are not connected to him. It's just like you sending your child to go and get um, a cup of water for you. And when the, the, on the child's way to getting the cup of water, they decide to play and just forget the whole intent for why they were sent now in that particular analogy they have not fulfilled your will 
because your will and desire was for them to bring that water. But on their way to getting that cup of water, they deviated. But until they realign themselves to getting the cup of water back to you, they have not fulfilled your will. That is the same thing that we do to God. When we come here and choose to do our mm -hmm. own thing, then he waits for us until we realign ourselves. Mm -hmm. Then we will benefit from what he has in store for us. So thank you so much. I'm so, so blessed by this message. Amen. 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 Thank you for yeah, sharing. Yeah. Um, Mother Major, that's really well detailed out again. And um, I trust we are also blessed. Yeah. Okay, anybody else? Any more comments, feedback? Yeah, yes. Um, thank you, Pastor Kwame. Uh, great message. And uh, my, my take on that is um, uh, when you, you talk about, uh, you, you took an uh, analogy about the user manual, user manual for the charger, I mean, for the phone. Um, I mean, every electronic equipment has a user manual. And uh, <laughs> our user manual, we have a maker, God, that's true. Whether we like it or not, that's that's a, a, real, a reality, yes. And uh, I, I think that the, the huge issue in the, the society now nowadays is uh, that we, we put aside that user manual and uh, we, we rely on other user manual, main user manual as a system, a government, could be a government, it could be a science, it could be, um, how do you call it, human tradition. And that's the main problem. We cannot, we cannot, uh, uh, it's not possible to, to, to be um, uh, able, able to, to fulfill happiness out of um, uh, how our, normal a normal user manual yes it's not possible and uh, something else uh, one one of the problem is as well is um, um, the way we think um, I, I know many friends who, who told me that um, think things have changed we need to think differently uh, it's like uh, God, God has changed, you know. The Bible says in Malachi 3, from verse 6 to 8, I am the Lord, I change not. God remained the same, and his word remained the same. We humans are the one changing. Today we think that this one is good. Tomorrow it's going to be bad. Um, uh, for so on and so on, yes. And uh, and uh, uh, my other take is that in all generation, God is looking for people who trust in Him with all their hearts, not leaning in their own understanding. So, men thinks that they can do everything with their um, wisdom with their uh, intelligence by putting aside the user manual, the Bible. Yes. So thank you, Pastor. That's a great um, message. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that, Brother Allen. Thank you all for your contribution. Um, indeed, he is the Lord, he changes not. Same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen. 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 Okay. Daddy Kelly, did you want to say something? Yeah, just a quick um, uh, response there. Asking about how do we know our purpose? We, we, we are doing one-on-ones 
for those who have not discovered their purpose, we can help you with one-on-one -on -one so that you discover your purpose. And we just want to remind ourselves also that wherever you are, you just serve or do your job as unto the Lord. You know, you have to be in the marketplace, like we went through the uh, leadership on the mountain of business or marketplace. If it is governments, wherever you are, you are doing the will of the Lord. Now, we talk also about redefining. You cannot redefine your purpose. You know, you cannot redefine your purpose because it's like, you are thinking as what Alan was saying that, okay, things have evolved, I need to evolve. And then you redefine. When you redefine, you are setting your own standards and you lose the warranty. You lose the warranty. There is no way that you will redefine your purpose and expect the full faith and backing of God because you are on your own, you are doing your own thing. Some people may feel like they have succeeded. They redefine their lives and they are doing something else and they see success. But any success that does not come from God is, a, uh, is something, it is a mirage, very temporal, which has come to steal from you, which has come to kill you, which has come to destroy you. The only success that is true and lasting that will lead you to live life to the full is the success that comes when you have a relationship with Christ. That is what grants you access to the holy mountain of the Lord. That is what grants you access to the divine warehouse, to the treasury of God. And when you come to that place, you know, there is everything that you are looking for. It is a place like that where you will renew your strength. You will mount on wings like an eagle. It is from that place that you will, you know, you would fall seven times and you will still rise up. It is in the presence of God that you will accomplish, you know, things like, like this. So God has given us all that we need and we just need to stay plugged in. Most of us have either done IQ test or have heard of it. What was the reason, the primary reason for IQ test? It's because some people don't follow principle. Why do I say that? Children, they did IQ test. IQ test started in France. They did IQ test because some children were failing and they wanted to differentiate between the children who failed because they were slow in understanding and the children who failed because they were lazy so that they'll be able to differentiate between those two and give them the necessary support that they need. The children who failed because they were lazy Laziness speaks of what? Disobedience to principle. When you have the potential, there's a discipline that comes with it. And in this case, the discipline is wake up on time, do your homework, you know, study, and all of that stuff, take your exams, you will succeed. But when you don't have that discipline, it means that you are dissing the maker, you are refusing to be obedient to your maker. A maker has told us to seek him first. When we don't seek him first, we are not following the principle. So I just thought I should add that. Thank you. Amen. 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 I'd like to Thank say. Thank you. Okay. Beloved, um, you know, beloved, um there is always a final product that we see maybe in people's gifts and uh, maybe in products that we use, amen. But sometimes we despise the process, but it is in the process, God has made process such that we, in that journey, discover ourselves so that when we arrive where he really intends for us to arrive, 
then we arrive um, complete in terms of the aspect of even discipline. Amen. Let me say, for example, the Lord sent you on earth to be a pastor. For example, you may never know that you are called to be a pastor until many years into your life. But if we continue to despise the journey, we may never even arrive at that destination. Amen. Please permit me just use my example for, for once here. Now, I want to just walk you on a very short journey. I've been a camera woman in a church. When church, when we used to go to a building, I used to be the one um, videotaping the pastor's message. Then I'll edit the message and make it available to the people. In another setting, I was a janitor. I cleaned the church. I cleaned the bathroom. In that same church, we um, equipped the building. Like when there were no chairs, we will buy chairs without the knowledge of anyone except the pastor. We will make sure that everything is in order. I've done transportation in church. Amen. And look at when you look at all these things, I never knew that I was called to be a teacher of the word. I just did what the Lord told me to do at that time. Now I've done the camera, I've done the editing, I've done transportation, I've done janitor. I've, I was a secretary. When people will put their tithes on offering, I'll take it to the pastor's office, I'll count it, document it, take it to the bank, deposit it, bring the receipt back to the pastor. I did that. And like I also talked about um, equipping the house of God. There was a season of my life that the Lord commanded that every morning I send out daily devotionals. So I wrote daily devotionals every day of my life for more than one year. And I was diligent in that assignment. Amen. There was a season in my life when I had a full-time ministry to men only, not women, only men. And I remained disciplined to that specific assignment. And beloved, I want to say that throughout all of those things and more, I didn't know I was called to be a teacher of the word of God. I didn't know. But I remained faithful to where he called me. So what am I trying to say here with all of these examples? Be diligent where he calls you in that season. He will move you from one level to the other. And throughout those processes, you will learn to be disciplined. Discipline is not a gift. Amen. It is not a gift. Nobody is born with the gift of discipline. It's something that you work out. So in these different um, areas of my life, I learned discipline when I understood that discipline wasn't a gift. And there is no way that you can fulfill purpose without discipline. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So please Amen. don't look at the stage and think people just arrived there overnight. Ask them their story. When you see the glory, find out the story. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you for sharing that, actually. Amen. More yeah. Amen. But, um, that's so true, you know. Even myself coordinating here today, if you asked me two years ago that you'd be somewhere coordinating, I would say no, I'm not sure. That's why I said we just have to stay plugged in. Yeah. Once you're plugged in, then the Lord will keep leading you towards your purpose. Does it mean this is your purpose? You don't know. Don't, don't, you never know where or what exactly your purpose for God is going to be. But so long as you are plugged in, just like you say, then we will keep discovering it every stage. It's not just going to be like, boom, over there. No. Thank you again for sharing that. Each and every one of you who actually contributed, those who listened, those who shared, and those who did not have the opportunity to share, there's always room to share even Next week, come next week, prepare to share. You have the opportunity to share, to testify. And again, like that case, uh, if you have any, um, if you want to understand, because some of us, again, if this was my first service, I'll tell you that I don't even know what my purpose is and all those sort of things. That's why we had one-on-one. -on -one. If you want to actually understand more or have a, get more understanding of how to, stay plugged and discover your purpose. We have a one-on-one -on -one with um, our leaders that came on being trained, Pastor Jones. You know, they are available for us to use, to make use of and get more understanding. And trust me, beloved, we will be blessed. We will get be blessed beyond measures. I've been there and I'm testifying to that. Let's make use of them. Um, 
thank you so much for everyone who joined us today. And at this juncture, I would just want to call on um, Danny K, who brought us the message to just pray for us and close us out. And then after which we will share the grace together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship. Thank you that you brought us together to share your word. Oh Lord our God, we have come, we have heard, and we pray for the grace to put into practice. Your word promises us that there's a blessing for the hearers, there's a blessing for those who put into practice. There's a blessing for the readers. There's a blessing for those who teach. So, Father, we pray that we we'll all benefit from these different types of blessings that you have promised us. We thank you, Lord, that by this message, we will focus and recover our purposes. And that, Lord, we will begin to identify the potentials that you have deposited in us, both in our physical beings, oh God, and in our spiritual being. And Lord, we also trust in you that we will adhere to your word, which will serve as the principles that will unlock the potentials in us to bring about the fulfillment of purpose. We trust in you, Father, that as we have heard your word this week, our going out is blessed and we will have wonderful testimonies as we come as we reconvene next Sunday about the wonderful things that you have done in our lives. We pray for those, O oh Lord, who are sick that may they receive their healing. We pray, Father, for those who will be attending interviews, Lord, that may you, Lord, be in the jury and may you grant favor to them in front of the jury. Lord, we pray for the panel that interviews them. Father, we pray also for those who, have, who are seeking breakthroughs in various areas. Oh, Lord, our God, because we have remained steadfast, we pray, Father, that you will push through for us so that we'll experience a new dawn, a new season, a season of breakthrough, a season of testimonies, a season of celebrations. Father, we just continue to honor you. We pray, Lord, for the grace to speak your word wherever we are, to bring more to the fold, because it is you in us who will be reconciling people unto yourself. We just bless you today. We say, may our perfect will be done in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And Amen. we say the grace. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The love of God. God. And sweet the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest on our Bible. Now and forever. Shall we all the days of our life, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed week, family. Have a blessed week. Bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.